Welcome to another installment of Donning the Armor. This morning we will begin in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So, in chapter 27, we went over the curses that will befall the nation of Israel when they do not confirm the words of the Lord by observing them. Cursed is the man who does not honor his mother and father. I know I'm paraphrasing that, but, you know, cursed be the man who, who sits in ambush of his neighbor. Curse the man who lays with his sister, who lays with an animal, who lays with his mother-in-law. Curse the man who sins before the eyes of God. Curse the man who creates an idol for himself secretly in his own house to worship. Outside of the prescribed way that the Lord has called us to worship. So with these those curses, now we come to the blessings. You have one half of the tribes sitting on or standing on Mount Ebal. We have one half of the tribes on Mount Gerizim. And we have the Levites calling out the blessings and the curses. And we have those shouting out amen. That we agree. We agree, God, with what you have said. You have said this will be a curse upon us if we do it. And we agree because you have said this will be a curse upon us. Well, now we come to the blessings. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall be you in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of all your ground, and the increase of your herds, and increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be these things when you obey the voice of the Lord your God. When you do as he asked, you will be blessed whether you live in the city or live in the country. Regardless of which one you live in, you will be blessed in abundance by the Lord your God because you walk in the way of the Lord. Don't think that because you own a farm in the country, you're more going to be more blessed than the man who lives in the city. Your blessings may look different, but you're not going to be more blessed because you live in one or the other. Your blessing will come because you obey the voice of the Lord your God, because you have submitted yourself to him. And you walk out his word in your life. You confirm it by observing it and walking it out. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. So when you walk out the word of the Lord, you're going to have more children. You're going to have more produce. You're going to have more increase in your herds. You're going to have more increase in your cattle. Everything's going to increase with you when you walk in the way of the Lord. You're going to see a blessing through the fruit of your body. You're going to see this increase. You're going to see greatness come upon you. And now I'm sure there are people that tried to walk with the Lord who didn't see quite the increase they thought they didn't see it. See in these things. Because it's the Lord's provision to give. But that doesn't mean you aren't blessed in the increase you do see. Blessed is the person who has 10 kids. And, you know, they start young so that by the time they're 60, they have grandkids. And they have this great life. And they love each other. But that doesn't mean that the couple who has one child who they've fed into and who loves them is any less of a blessing. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Doesn't mean that you have more, you're blessed more. Because the blessing is in the love and in the provision, not in how great the provision is, but in the provision itself. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. 
Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed you, shall you be when you go out. So when you go into your land, when you go in, when you go out, you will be blessed in the things that you go to do because you do them for the Lord. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be your provisions that you are now able to provide your family with. The Lord provides to you and you're able to provide to your family through you because the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. When the armies come against you because you've kept the name of the Lord, because you've done as he commanded, because you've walked out your word, they will come at you in one way and they will be so defeated and terrified of your might as the Lord goes before you that they will chaotically flee in all directions. Seven ways is scatter out from before you. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So that when you do right by the Lord, you will be blessed in abundance. The land itself will bring forth blessings for you in all you do. Your storehouses will fill. You will not be sitting in a state of famine. All the things you do which glorify the Lord will come to fruition, will come and bear fruit because of the greatness of your work in his name. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. That if you do this, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he swore. He promised these things. He will see them through. If you keep up your part of the covenant, he will keep up his and will bless you in abundance. Because the Lord does not break his promises. You will break your word and you'll see the curses come because of it. But the Lord will always be ready to bless you in abundance when you return to him. Because he's a good and loving father. You want to step out of that relationship? Then that is on you. Because if you walk in his ways, if you continue in the things he's taught you, then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you because they know he goes before you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. You will have life in abundance because this is what the Lord has promised to give you. You know, we will often hear the, and I, I know I've said it in the past myself, but I've re, kind of rethought the way I think this as well. That um, we can lose our salvation in the way that we can walk away from God. And I do not fully believe in once saved, always saved, because I believe it's a point of view issue. If your point of view, of it, it, it's a point of view issue, once saved, always saved. We're sealed from the creation of the world from the creation of everything. Those who are his are sealed before he creates them. When he creates you, he creates you sealed because the Lord is the beginning and the end. All things are the present to him. He can see as he creates you, he already knows who's with him in the end because he touches all points in time at the same time. So, to God's point of view, you are once saved, always saved. To God's point of view, you he sees how you have lived your life and how you have walked out and whether or not you've accepted him. 
that has already been seen. He already knows. So once you're saved, you're saved. To the human point of view, we look like we go in and out of salvation. There are people who grew up in the church who by the time they hit 20, 30, 40, they fall away and they curse the name of the Lord and they never return to him. And that's where John will say they went out from us because they were never of us. To our point of view, our human point of view, they seemed as though they were of us. To God's point of view, he knew they never were. So he never sealed them. They were never once saved, always saved. To us, it looks like they were. But then we also have people who live their lives contrary and in rebellion to the Lord for more than half their life. Then come to the Lord at the end and we clap our hands and we cheer. Because they've come to the Lord. But the Lord, from the beginning, before he created them, knew that and sealed them in that day. He knew that they'd wander for 40 or more years in absolute rebellion to him, but come to him in the end. So we will often have this idea that God will never let go of our hand, but we can let go of his. And I don't like that idea because as I said, I relate to God in a lot of ways and I relate to scripture as a father myself. If I am holding my child's hand and they let go of mine, I do not need to let go of theirs. If anything, I'm going to squeeze tighter to make sure that they understand they need to hold my hand. That would be the Lord sealing us is even when we try to let go, he squeezed tighter. So what I like to say to our point of view, in our point of view, The Lord is a father, like the father of the prodigal son. He wishes for us to walk with him. He keeps us in his embrace, in his household. But us as rebellious young ones can step out of his house whenever we wish because he's given us that free will to do so. And whether or not we return, that is on us. The Lord knows whether or not we've returned and he grieves when we don't because he wishes for none to perish. But that's our responsibility. Our point of view is we don't know whether or not we're saved. In this moment, I don't know whether or not I'm saved. It seems as though I'm saved now because at this moment in time, I'm saved. I profess Christ. I live under his authority. For 38 years, I lived not under his authority. And if I died today, I have no doubt that I'd be in his presence. But if I live for another 30 years, I cannot say with extreme confidence that I will not turn from him again because that's the wicked nature of man. He knows whether or not I'll turn from him, but I do not. Because life takes us in a lot of weird and strange ways. So the Israelites are being told, you have this choice to leave his house. The Lord is not going to leave you. You will leave him. He is willing and wishes nothing more to rain these blessings upon you. The curses will be when you leave him. You will bring these curses upon yourself because that's the natural state of the world. Be with the Lord and experience his blessings of his protection. You have a responsibility to go out and live life in his embrace, constantly seeking to be under his authority anywhere you go in the world. That if you do those things, it will go well for you. It's not much different for us. 
when people talk about Calvinism and Armenianism, um, I go, I don't really care for either one. My view of election is what I just laid out. If somebody wants to label me a Calvinist, I don't care. If somebody wants to label me an Armenian, I don't care. Because those are man-made terms to describe what the Lord is trying to tell us in Scripture. I simply look at Scripture and say, this is what the Lord has told me. And whether I can fully comprehend it or not is completely irrelevant. I'm just the type of person who likes to try to make it wrap around in my head to fit. And in doing so, I've come up with this. Imperfect explanation as it may be. But the blessings of the Lord are there as long as we choose to live under the rules of his roof, so to speak. You live under my roof, you live under my rules. We want to live under his authority. We live under his rules. And our father will bless us because of it. Because we're living in his ultimate wisdom. We go out, we face the curses of the world. Because that's all the world has is curses. The Lord will open you, uh, open to you his good treasure, the heavens. To give the rain to your land in its season. And to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, that you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods and serve them. <clears throat> so if you continue in the way of the Lord, he will bless you in abundance. Open to you his treasure, the very heavens themselves. He will give rain to your land in its seasons because they live in a desert. They have rainy seasons and not rainy seasons. I live in the Northeast of the United States. We get everything all the time. He'll bless the work of your hands. You're not to borrow from other nations because the idea of borrowing as a nation is, as we know in the United States, being in as much debt to other nations as we are, you become subservient to those nations. You become a, a borrower. You become a, a servant to them. You now need to be careful to them because you owe them. If you don't borrow, you don't owe you don't become entangled in falling underneath the authority of another nation. That's why the Lord said to them, not so much never borrow money, as in as a nation, you are not going to do that because you were to be set apart. Always above, never beneath. Although they would find themselves beneath other nations pretty much their entire history because they would not heed the commandments of the Lord their God. The Lord warned them. They did not listen. And we are not to turn aside to the right or the left. We are to walk straight in that narrow path of the word of the Lord. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So we had the curses before that cursed be the individual that do these things. Now we're seeing the blessings of the nation. Now we're seeing the curses that will come upon the nation if they do not follow the word of the Lord. If they do not do these commands, cursed shall be you in the city and cursed shall be you in the country. You're going to be cursed regardless of where you're at because you do not follow the way of the Lord. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land and the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall be you when shall be you shall you be when you come in and cursed shall be you, you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke, 
in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. And your heavens which you are over, which are over your head shall be bronze. And the earth which is under you shall be iron. And the Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. From the heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. So you don't walk in the way of the Lord. The Lord will remove his hand of protection, remove his blessings. And you will feel what this promised land is without the provision and blessing of the Lord. You live in the desert. You're going to be struck with sickness now. You're going to be struck with invading armies searching for provisions and limited resources. You're going to now feel the scorching of this sun. You're the, the rains will stop coming. You will be under drought. You will perish quickly from this land because you refuse to do as I commanded you. You fall in to be just like these people. The Lord said, I will vomit you out just as I will cause the land to vomit those people out. <clears throat> these curses sound very much like the land will be vomiting them out if they do not follow through in the commands of the Lord and be a holy people unto him. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, just as the Lord had blessed them to say, your enemies will come to, before you and scatter in fear. You will go out and you will scatter in fear and you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and no one shall frighten them away. You will be, your dead bodies will be there for the carrion birds and beasts and no one will even shoo them away. The people around you will despise you so much and will be so troublesome that they will just let the birds and the beasts eat you. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with the scab, with the itch, and from which you cannot be healed. So the plagues of Egypt, these will be now visited upon you because you did not want to honor the Lord your God. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart, and you shall grope at noonday as a blind man gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall only be oppressed and plundered continually, and no one shall save you. You know, you, you read these, and unbelievers will read these all the time, and they will sit there and say, see, that's not a loving relationship because the Lord is just abusive and wicked. One, you only get that idea of morality based on biblical principles because all other cultures before it were wicked and treated people the same way the Lord is talking about here. People were always vicious to one another. People were always brutal and abusive to one another. It's biblical principles in the law of God that has actually changed that for the better. People like to say, well, we need secular liberal values. Those all came from the Bible, not from anywhere else. So if you want to live in those secular liberal values, what you're doing is you are trying to remove God from God's word and still live under his word. You just want to have your sins that you still want to hold on to be affirmed while also holding on to the framework with which he created. And that does not work. And that's why we end up in the way we do. But A, the Lord is the potter. 
the clay doesn't get to complain to the potter about what it's being made in, what fashion it's being made. Because no matter what the, what the potter makes, it is useful. And this is not speaking about just wantonly punishing people. This is a specific people who were brought forth and blessed in abundance by the God of all creation. And they are choosing to walk outside of his blessings. They are rejecting his blessings and embracing the curse. If I tell my child, you continue to walk in that parking lot with your head down, you're going to get hit by a car. And then he runs out from in front of me with his head down and gets hit by a car. You can't say, I made pushed my kid in front of the car to get hit. That's not the way that works. He chose not to listen to his father. The Israelites are choosing not to listen to theirs. He's warned them, this will happen when you don't follow me. I will give you blessings when you do, but this horrible stuff's going to happen when you don't. Some of it I will bring upon you as punishment for your inaction. Most likely my son goes to run out in front of me, not looking in a parking lot. I'm going to grab him and probably swat his little behind. I'm going to strike him with a punishment because he did not listen to me. And did not do as I said in the same way the Lord is doing to the nation of Israel. Because they are a infantile nation floundering out as younglings going into the world. A world that is against everything they stand for. You shall betroth a wife, but another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard but shall not gather its grapes. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from before you and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies and you shall not, and you shall have no one to rescue them. All of these things are things that the Lord before has explained our blessings, that living under his law you're, you know, somebody slaughters your ox. They need to bring it back. They need to restore it. No one's going to restore this now. This idea of a wife comes from the Lord. All these other, all these other pagan nations have polygamy. They have all these, what we call open marriages. Now you build a house. Well, the law was giving you control over that house. And the way to rectify any issues. Those other pagan nations live under might makes right. You can build a house, but you don't have to live in it if somebody else is stronger and comes by and rips you out of it. He's saying, you, I gave you a law. You don't want to live under my word and my law? You're not going to have the benefits of my law. Because you've, you've, you've left it. You've gone away from it. Your sons and daughters shall be given to, an, to another people and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. And there shall be no strength in your hand. A nation whom you have not known shall eat the fruit of your land and the produce of your labor and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually. So you shall be driven mad because of the sight which your eyes see. The Lord will strike you in the knees and on the legs with severe boils which cannot be healed, and from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. All of these things are going to come about. You are not going to have the ability to enjoy any of this land because the pagans are going to sweep back in and take it back from you because I have driven them out. But now you're going to be driven mad with the sight of all of your progeny being put in the bondage again you're going to be subject to the the sicknesses and the famine 
and the pestilence that I've kept from you in my blessings. The Lord will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither of you, your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord will drive you. The Lord is telling them, you will come to a point in your history where you will set a king over you. And it's not even when Saul comes along with Samuel. They tried to make Gideon king before him and worshipped his armor as an idol as we go through Judges. Almost from the beginning, they're looking for a king of their own. But he's saying, you know, you're going to set a king over you. And then you are going to be pulled out to a land you have never even heard of. Because at this time, it really doesn't even exist. The time of Moses, those nations don't even exist and won't for several hundred years. But they will come to be. And they will come and destroy you. And you will worship these Idols of wood and stone that are not living gods. And you'll just become an afterthought in these other nations. A proverb they tell their children about how to watch out and respect things or you'll be conquered like we conquered them. You shall carry much seed out of the field, but gather little in. For the locust shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and tend them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olive shall drop off. You shall beget sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. Locusts shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. As he told them, do not borrow, only lend. Do not be the tail, be the head. But he's telling them, when you depart from me, these things will come. You will be the tail, you will be the lower. Because it's me who is providing the, all of this for you. And when it's removed because you don't want me in your life anymore. And you want to go out from me. You will fall. And you will be working in that pig pen looking at that slop wishing you could eat it. Because that's how far you will have fallen. Moreover all these curses shall come upon you and produce and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. So you can't outrun these curses. They will come for you. They will pursue you and they will oppress you because you did not follow what the Lord commanded. Your descendants forever will have to know of these curses because they will come upon you. When you leave my provisions, you go out into the wickedness of the world. And the wickedness of the world does not love you as the Lord your God does. And it will not care for you. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in need of everything. And he shall put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flies. A nation whose luggage, language, luggage, whose language you will not understand. A nation of fierce countenance, which does not respect the elderly, nor show favor to the young. And they shall eat the increase of your livestock and the produce of your land until you are destroyed. You shall not leave, they shall not leave you grain or new wine or oil or the increase of your cattle or the offspring of your flocks until they have destroyed you. 
because you did not serve the Lord with gladness, with happiness, because of all the abundance he's given you, and you turned from the Lord anyway. Yeah, there's going to be foreigners coming in because they see that increase. They see that abundance. And in this wilderness land, they see all this abundance and they wish it for themselves. There's a scarcity of resources. They want it. You don't want it. I'll give it to them. How many times did we say that to our children? Oh, you don't want those new toys? You don't want to clean up after yourself? You don't want to treat those new toys with respect? We'll donate it to children who will. They shall besiege you at all, at all your gates until your high and your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land, and they shall besiege you at all your gates throughout all your land which the Lord your God has given you. You put your trust in your walls, in your power. Yeah, it will come down because your trust should solely be in me. Your your gates only stand because I allow them to stand. You shall eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your sons and your daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you, in the siege and in desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you. That happens when Assyria comes against the kingdoms, when Assyria comes against, um, was it was it Hezekiah? But they're they're being besieged. And a woman comes up to cry out to him. King, this woman is being unfair. We agreed that we will eat each other's children because of how hungry we are and the famine we're in and because of the siege. And we ate my child first. But now that it's time for her to give up her child for us to eat, now she's refusing and the king would weep over it because the siege is doing this to people. You will eat the flesh of your sons and daughters whom the Lord your God has given you. Because when we end up in those desperate straits, we do things that we would otherwise think unthinkable. Like mothers pulling lots and deciding on which child to eat first. And then trusting in the other parent to give up their child as well. Now that they've eaten. The world is a wicked, wicked place. And it drives us to wicked, wicked things. It is only by the grace of God that we stay out of that. That grace does not extend forever. Even if we are living for him, we will face dire straits and tough times. That's why we need to hold fast to him. But it gets tough. The sensitive and very refined man among you will be hostile towards his brother, toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the rest of his children whom he leaves behind so that he will not give any of them the flesh of his children whom he will eat. Because he has nothing left in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you at all your gates. So this sensitive and refined man this man of good countenance, not this brute. He won't even share with his wife, his brother, his other children, the flesh of the child who he's devouring and cannibalizing at the time, keeping it all for himself. That's how far, far you will have fallen without my blessings. The tender and delicate woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because the delicateness and the sensitivity will refuse to the husband of her bosom and to her son and her daughter, her placenta which comes out from between her feet and her children whom she bears, for she will eat them secretly for lack of everything in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you at all your gates. She will hide the fact that she even gave birth and will eat the afterbirth and the child that comes out from her secretly away from her other children and her husband so that they starve while she eats. So far will you have fallen. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law which are written in this book, 
that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God. Then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you are afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law, which the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. You shall be left few in number, whereas you are as the stars of heaven in multitude, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And it shall be that just as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from, the, from off the land which you go to possess. Then the Lord will scatter you among all the peoples from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. And among those nations you shall find no rest, nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. In the morning you shall say, Oh, that it were evening. And at evening you shall say, Oh, that it were morning. Because of the fear which terrifies your heart and because of the sight which your eyes see. And the Lord will take you back to Egypt in ships by the way of which I said to you, you shall never see it again. And there you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. I have blessed you in abundance. And because you see this abundance and you turn from me anyway, I will give you over to all the horrors that this world has. Horrors that you have not even seen even in the captivity of Egypt. Horrors of this pagan world that have been kept from you. I don't know how many parents there are that do the same thing as me, but I imagine there's quite a few still that you have bubbled your children for as long as you can to keep them from the horrors of this world, to keep them from the degeneracy of this world and the wickedness of it. That we, we as parents have kept them from even the knowledge of how horrible this world is. For as long as we can do it, we will do it. Well, the Lord is now opening that, those horrors, the eyes of the Israelites to the horrors of this world, to the horrors of that ancient world, to the realities of how wicked the world is all around them. In saying, this is all that I've kept you from. This is all that I've kept you safe from. But if you want to turn from me, and you want to follow after those idols. You want to follow after those gods. You want to follow after those pagan nations. You want to be as them. Instead of being set apart wholly for me. Then you can have them. You can have what they have. You can live in the horrors that they live in. And I will give you all of it. And the idea of being given all of it, all of what this world has to offer, should terrify us. It should terrify us to the core. It should make our blood run cold. Because we very much, like these Israelites, live in a weird bubble in the U.S., we live in this bubble of Western civilization that is failing, that is shrinking, that is nearly popping.
but there are Christians all over the world who live in terror, who are persecuted, who are attacked, who are slain, who are tortured, who are told, if you do not renounce the name of the Lord, you will be murdered right here and we will murder your children in front of you. And there are people who need to beg their children, remember the Lord, do not turn from him because these wicked people doing this to you can only take your life as you then watch them be beheaded in front of you before you are beheaded next. We live in a bubble that is kept from the horrors and wickedness of this world. Stuff that we cannot even imagine still goes on. We say that slavery ended. There is more slavery in the world now at this very moment that I'm making this video than there ever was during the Atlant transatlantic slave trade. As a matter of fact, there was more slavery in the Middle East and Africa during the transatlantic slave trade than there was through the transatlantic slave trade. We just don't teach that because it doesn't help the narrative of how evil the Western world is. Because the Western world needs to be evil to be destroyed. Because the secular religion needs it. Because then they can bring their own wickedness. The wickedness we see in China, where they're still having concentration camps to this day. And people being forcibly sterilized. People being forced to murder their children. To this day, they want that religion to get a firm foothold here. We are so blind to the persecution. We hear about it. We pray about it. And then we forget about it because we don't have to live through it. Because the Lord continues to bless us in our in our loyalty to him, even though that loyalty is waning. And one day that curtain may drop and he may give us over to the wickedness which we, with which we wish to live our lives as a nation, as a civilization. It seems as though it's already happening. And blessed will be those who continue not to be offended for his sake for his name, who will continue to be loyal to him through whatever comes. Because we still live in that bubble that our father has given us, that bubble of protection of being in his embrace. But there are so many that don't live in that bubble that don't live under that protection. And these Israelites are being shown that reality of the world, that reality of the world they don't want to know, that they wish to never see, but they will. And they need to make sure they live right before the Lord, as we need to make sure we live right before the Lord and pray and honor and glorify him in all that we do. Because if we don't, there is no chance for a revival. Because the revival starts with the people in the revival. The Lord will work and will continue to work and grow for his glory until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in the fruition. And then when the anger of the Jews is provoked and the time of Jacob's trouble comes, then it will all come crashing down. His judgment will come on us, on the entirety of creation, the way he is promising it will come on the nation of Israel in the coming centuries. Be right with the Lord because it's the only way to keep ourselves outside of the reality of the wickedness and the cruelty 
and the horrors and the brutality that the world actually offers. Be in the Lord. Because in that way, the only thing the brutality and the evil of the world can take from us is this life. The worst it can do to us is the greatest thing it can do to us. And as to close our eyes here so that we open them in his glorious presence. The Lord is unveiling the wickedness of the world to the Israelites. Things that they have never witnessed. Let it be a warning to open our eyes so that we further and more passionately seek his glory, his wonders, and his love. That's where we shall end it for this morning. I hope this was fruitful for you. I hope to see you back again next time. But until then, be blessed.